Well, welcome to question seven from chapter two uh, from the book um, Fundamentals of Particle Technology. So um, over the past few questions we've been looking at uh, distributions and uh, also some tabular data. Question seven follows on from question six where we calculated the specific surface of a distribution from the continuous function information by continuous function that I simply mean an equation and we have the same same thing again in, in question seven only uh, the continuous function is based on a in this instance a mass distribution that's n3x uppercase n3x so it's a cumulative distribution that's what the uppercase represents the three represents a mass or volume if you prefer they are the same the mass and volume distribution are the same Okay, so the question, the first part to question seven then is to calculate the specific surface. Okay, so that's the objective. And what does an N3 distribution look like? Well, not normally like this one, because this refers to the same limits that were given in question six. And in question six, we had a slightly unusual distribution in that it was a straight line going from 1 to 101 microns. So that was naught, and that's going to be 1.0. Question 6, this is a number distribution, so that was n naught x. In question 7, it's a, a mass or volume distribution, which is n 3x, but we still have the same geometric that should be a straight line going to 101 microns. So it's not at all surprising that uh, N3, because now we're differentiating for the mass or volume distribution. So rather than n naught x is N3x. Whoops. Just, um, so we need uh, to differentiate that and that would give us n 3 x and in the previous question when we looked at this uh, by inspection when we looked at this this graph we came up with the equation that capital n naught x only in our case now it's going to be capital n three x was equal to one over a hundred x minus naught point zero one and then we differentiate that just as we did in question six we'll end up with n3x is equal to 1 over 100. And just like in question 6, if we actually plot that out, it's going to be a rectangle, and the integral of the area is going to, under uh, this per micron uh, range, the mass distribution, mass fraction per micron range, uh, the area is going to be sum up to 1, as it should do. What do I mean by that? Well, the graph would look something like this. If we were to plot n3x out, it would go from 1 to 101, 1 to 101, and it would be a straight line, okay, where the y value, or the n3x value, is 1 over 100, and therefore we fulfil the obligation that that is an integral that goes up to 1, from the units of 1 to 101. Very, very similar mathematics, only here we're talking about a mass distribution rather than the number distribution. To a certain extent, that's where the similarity ends, because funnily enough, we have an easy equation, because we're Try, we're tasked with finding out the specific surface area per unit volume. And the equation 
for specific surface area per unit volume that we're going to use is this. Now we've used a very similar equation when we were looking at discrete functions rather than continuous functions. What do I mean by that? I'll have to uh, clear a little bit of space if I move that up. That's a very similar equation to what we were looking at when we had the tabular data. That's what I mean by the uh, discrete function because we had a summation <clears throat> that looked something like this. M of i is mass fraction x of i, x bar of i, is midpoints in each one of the grades. So these are, if you like, our two equivalent equations for specific surface area per unit volume. This is the one we want for question 7, it's a continuous function. This is the one we were using in the earlier questions when we had the, um, the tabular data. Uh, question 3 or 4 uh, one, one of those. So that was, that was doing question three and four. Okay, so if we are using our continuous function, then we're talking about six integral one to one hundred and one. N three x is one over one hundred. That of course is a constant, so we can take one over one hundred outside. So that just becomes six over one hundred. And that then becomes integral of dx over x. As simple as that. So we have 6 over 100. And uh, it's the natural log. Ln x 1 and 101 equals 6 over 100 times by the natural log of 101. Right, so I need to uh, work out the natural log of 101. So just keep this one up again. So we want, let's say, um, plug it directly in, ln101 So that then becomes 6, so if we say times by previous cell times by 6 divided by 100 gives us a value 277. So if we can come back here, gives us the value of 0 0.277 microns to the minus 1. Pretty simple, that's the answer. It's much easier working with mass data rather than number data. Hopefully that's one of our answers that we had. Yeah, there it is. Very good. So that's the specific surface area per unit volume of the distribution when based on the mass data. Now we're now asked to calculate the SOTA mean diameter. And the SOTA mean diameter is the equivalent spherical diameter. So let's try and draw a sphere, which I'm never very good at. And that is x, the diameter of the sphere. So SV of this sphere that I've just drawn is going to be pi times x squared. Because that's the surface area of a sphere, divided by 
pi over 6 x cubed, because that's the volume of a sphere. So in other words, SV for a sphere is 6 over x. And we're after the equivalent spherical diameter that has the same specific surface area per unit volume as the distribution, which is 0 0.277. So if we do if we rearrange that equation, x is equal to six over naught point two seven seven, which is six divided by point two. Seven seven twenty one point seven microns twenty one point seven twenty one point seven. So our equivalent spherical diameter <coughs> is twenty one point seven and that is also answer number C. So question seven is fairly straightforward and the takeaway message is it's much easier to work with mass or volume data rather than number data. Okay. I think that sort of wraps up what I want to do in chapter two. That's all to do with the basics. So we'll look onto some applications now of particle technology and some calculations based on the um, the inputs there because we won't be looking any further for the moment for the uh, question now there is one other question at the end of chapter two but i'll, I'll leave that till uh, uh, to another time okay then bye